thank you everyone. I appreciate very much the opportunity to speak today and discuss uh, old and new. Um, I feel like I'm part of the old group now. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, what's old, what's new? What we're going to be talking about today is uh, the blue box. Here in Ontario, we call it uh, for the recyclables. Uh, we also can do things with uh, the MERV, which is called the Material Recoveries Facility. And the main focus that we're going to show today is just because it's waste, it's still a product that can be used. It's a resource, it's a material that we can create new things with. And I, the theme so far seems to be quite a bit on textiles. Uh, recycling of PET is huge in the textile market as well as you'll see in some of the slides. Um, I also like to thank NAPCOR, the North American Association for Container Recycling, PET Container Recycling, for some of the slides I'm going to be showing in this presentation. So what we're looking at, does recycling really work? How much of it is recycled and is there a value? So just think about that in the back of your mind for a few minutes. So here are some of the things. Again, the fiber theme that we've had today so far, uh, carpets, clothing, I mean, the textiles that Jan just talked about, uh, Nike uses a lot of that material, recycled material for all the Nike clothing, uh, Under Armour, the special fibers and everything like that. That's all PET. Some of the clothing that we're wearing in here is PET. So fiber recycling, as you'll see in the charts in the next little while, you'll see how much of that goes back into uh, the market here. Another big thing that's happened here we did with uh, Ice River, which is, uh, I'm going to show a little bit of their plant today. We take about 80 million pounds of the recycled uh, blue box material to that plant here in Shelburne, Ontario. It's the first of its kind in the world. It was built in 2008, uh, operational in 2009. We're the leaders in the world in that technology, and you'll see why. Again, the fiber, the packaging, uh, some of the new packaging we'll be bringing into the market. Uh, our favorite, Tim Hortons. Uh, starting next year, uh, we're bringing a big sheet line uh, into uh, Montreal uh, with the cup making machine on top of it. And they'll be making that a complete system for polypropylene, high impact polystyrene, and also 100% RPET materials for the cups. So here is something that we, again, are holding here, that we see all the items that we get, especially our favorite, the winter tube, which we all need nowadays. Packaging, uh, we started that first one back in uh, 2006, as I'll show you in the slides. And this here is the Ice River Springs. You're gonna see this here. These are all made out of 100% ARPIT packaging uh, from the recycled blue box here in Ontario. And as well as the material beside it, this is, I think, uh, the Sobeys product line over here. But they also do President's Choice plus their own Ice River Springs bottle. Again, made out of 100% our pet. So recycling works. First, you have to recover the pet. Is pet being recovered? Pet bottles, the soft drink bottles, the uh, juice bottles that we have here. You know. 2013, we had a huge increase of over 30%. And when I talk, I'm talking about North America, not just on a local level, but on a North American basis. So here we have the recycling rates, as you can see from that core. 2006, pretty much uh, steady, not much happening. A lot of it going to exports, as opposed to now. A lot of the increase, we're up to 1.7. 1.8 million pounds, or yes, million pounds of material. And you see the collection process here, again, quite sufficient. The growth that we're seeing is going here. And you see this whole trend moving up on the PET recycle. It's just continually going up. In Canada, uh, most of the uh, provinces, except for Ontario, is a deposit base. So almost all the containers outside of Ontario for PET are recycled. Okay, so it's slightly different. We use Stewardship Ontario. There's a slight tax on it, and that encourages the recycling that way. The blue box, we, that's how we pay for the blue box process. 
Here again, how much of the material is being reclaimed? And you see again, good size and numbers. And you know, you're probably saying, well, why are you showing this? Here's your chart now. Back in 2007, almost 50% of everything went into, uh, uh, how do I say this, the fiber market, okay? Now you see the growth going into the food and beverage because all of a sudden the ability to purify the PET and make it back into direct food contact, that's the big thing that's happening. The technology is taking it from fiber, which was carpet first and foremost back in 2000s, 2005, and now the new technology trend is to take it to a next level. What's funny is that we have so many talks about fiber, the fiber market now is demanding even higher level of cleanliness and processing than the bottle market, which is purity. So it's just so funny. Now being here, I'm seeing the, the, the fiber people in North America and in Canada demanding such high quality standards also from their recycled pack. So this is the big thing. The trend, oh sorry. The trend's going up again. And here you see the amount of material that's going in here. So in 2006, you see it's only about 100 million uh, pounds of RPEC going into the food products. And now you see the trends going up and up and up. How is everyone involved in these numbers? You know, who is it? And what's a small group, family-owned business, 250 employees, five plants in, uh, in Italy, and we make extrusion machinery, membrane plants. That we talked, uh, that we've heard about for the uh, for the water, for the uh, for carrying the water, also for the uh, environment. We make uh, profile plants here in uh, this area. Here we have built right just down the street on the. QEW, they're a client of ours, uh, Royal Group, the Pipe, IPEX, uh, Vision Extrusion. We supply extrusion machinery primarily as well. So we see this, photovoltaics, we built the, uh, the sheet lines for that. We don't really build the product, we just build the technologies and the machinery that our clients need. So we're more of a listening type of company that makes the machines happen. So since 2006, that was when we supplied our first plant for recycling PET in North America. You see the trend going up here, again, huge trend. And since then, since 2006, these are some of our clients. Some of them are fiber clients, such as Mohawk, Mohawk Carpets, Mohawk Fibers, Big Groups, Marlin, that's uh, that plant went in uh, at the beginning of the year, it's been operational. Another fiber group taking trash and making it cash product. So we have a lot of great successes here. Earthbound Farms, an organic based company, they're going over to, with me next uh, in the next week to Italy to accept their next big sheet line. They're organic based farmers. They're now producing their own sheet to make their own packaging that we buy here at, uh, at Lombas, at Sobeys, at Longos and other grocers here locally. It's grown in California, made out of recycled PET, and we eat it, ready to eat salads. So all these clients are big users of ours, and right there, you're looking at close to a billion pounds of capacity that we've added on to the market here in North America through our clients. So that whole huge shift you see is our technology in the conversion to remove the, all the foreign elements from PET and make it back into a purified flake so it can be used again and again, either in fiber or packaging or ready to consume uh, food or, for example, the bottles that we have, the plastic bottles that we have. So I don't want to spend too much time on the process because I don't want to get too technical, but what it is is basically our concept is we bring the material in at one end, wash the material with the dirtiest of water, and at the very end, we have a clean flake. The properties, mechanical, chemical, and physical hot temperature. So we have those three elements that we use, counterflow of the water through the steps to make sure that the material gets clean. So we use a very little water, we use the fresh water as the rinsing water, and then work this way back 
to the plant so that every step the water is filtered and moves forward. So the dirtiest water is here, and then we send it to the wastewater treatment plant. The fresh water comes in at this end. So we use approximately one pint to make a pound, or in Canada we like to say one liter to make a kilo of PET. Another big thing that we have to do on the PET is remove the glue, because the glue changes the color of the PET. That's the only thing that we really worry about once we've eliminated all the material. So the special filter that we need and the chemicals that we need in the, uh, in the hot wash, friction wash, is the key element on the whole process. Other than that, we want to get rid of as much of the waste at the front end here of the bottle using the caustic soda and the surfactants at that main point. So once we have the exterior of the bottle clean, and we can get rid of all those elements, we can then start to focus further on the key, the key points that, may, that degrade, such as aluminum, metals, remove those items, non-PVT bottles, through optical sorters, etc. So basically what a plant looks like, the pit area here for the pre-wash, we bring in a lot of the material here, we dump it in, it then gets loaded up, or I should say, I should have been one slide first, sorry. Uh, the bales are cut, wires are cut, and then loaded into the pit, or an automatic loading system, which this one actually eats the bales themselves. Then we send it to the whole bottle hot wash. We take out all the materials, all the form matters, labels, anything, glass, rocks, stones, etc. We move them. Let's see if this works. Nope. That was supposed to be a video showing the technology, how it works. Okay, let's see if it works for a few seconds. No. Okay. So you get saved. Okay. Uh, the water is showers down from the top. And that way, again, that's the dirtiest water. It's the filtered water washing the dirtiest containers. And it takes out with it all the crud, the waste, any rocks, stones, little pieces of labels, old labels, material. Now, recently you've seen on the market shelves this full, beautiful bottle that just looks great. It's got a full sleeve on it. It's got a new package and things like that. I didn't want to bring up any packaging because, you know, the recyclers don't like it. So what we had to do is we got feedback from the recycler, the whole recycling industry, that we needed to develop a new machine because this product is starting to take the market here in North America away from the uh, pressure sensitive and also from the paper label and things like that. So the shrink sleeve label became a huge detriment. Why? Because the, you can't identify the shrink sleeve label uh, through, uh, through the near sorters, near infrared technology for the sorting of it automatically. And as such, the recyclers were losing a lot of the value of the PPT because they were now sending it to trash, okay? And when I mean by trash, it's going to another processor for after that, not for the PPT market. So because of that, we developed this, so, we developed a special machine, which is a, a high friction machine for the bottles. And we, instead of having the water showering down, we have the bottles moving against one another quite quickly and that way, it'll rip the label slightly, and then through the process, it'll tear it off. Rather than damaging the bottle's neck or ripping the bottle apart, we just want to get the label off the PBT bottle, and that's the way we do it. And it's been very successful. We now have that running, this unit running up at uh, Ice River Springs. We have it also running at uh, Marlin in uh, Georgia and Midwest, Express, uh, Midwest Exchange in uh, Chicago. So this little unit has, uh, and we're going to be supplying three more in the next little while as well. So this little unit also can be added with the option to have water coming in at the top as well, so it can give you a pre-wash as well of the, uh, the containers to make the washing go quicker and cleaner. Then once the label comes off, we need to remove the label from the process to make it much more easier as well.
Again, the video's not going to work, but the bottles are cascading down. Once we have the bottle stripped off, we can then go through the optical sorting here. And what we're doing here is we're taking out from the constant feeder the first near, near infrared, infrared technology, selects the non PDT, removes it, or the color PDT, and then sends it back to, uh, to the line, the really good containers, and the bad ones get rejected and get processed at a polypropylene plant or a high density polyethylene plant, whatever. That process will then take that and make it a new container. Then we go into wet grinding as well, oh, metal detection, sorry, as well there. And then here's a typical layout. This layout is a Pet Star Coca Cola's plant. They have two other uh, our plants operating here in North America. And every hour of every day, they produce six tons of PET to make new, uh, new pop bottles. So it's quite a nice plant, very nice for a recycling plant. Uh, this is a manual sort after the optical sort just to verify that uh, anything that wasn't taken out is removed. Then we go into the wet grinding operation. And we use wet grinding because it just, uh, we feel is a better process as opposed to dry grinding, less dust, uh, less fines, etc. And that way it just keeps the cost of operation lower and also you can save more money on the whole process. Then we have our processing stages of the wet flakes. A dewatering screw here, sorry, you press the wrong button. A dewatering screw here to make sure that the clean flakes are moved forward and we use the overflow water in our system from the filter to go back and take it back to the wet grinding operation. The overflow water from each step will then go forward. So the first sink flow tank, the friction wash in the second sink flow tank. This is where our rinsing begins at the end here, at this stage, and that water continuously moves up through the filtration systems. This way we use minimal amount of energy as well. Although we have a hot wash only in this area, because the flakes are hot, when it transfers over to here, the energy is then transferred to the water and we warm up this water. The flakes move forward to this area here. We take that heat and we capture it and we then take that transfer of water back into this hot water take stage. Little things like that helps make the operation much more efficient. Our vessel here, the friction washer, again, the shower principle, just like when we take a shower, we shower down the water from the top rather than have it immersed in the PET in a bath. Uh, if there is glue on it, the PET would, in the bath, transfer to other flakes and degrade the quality of the PET. With our principle, the water showering down is extracted at the end, and we eliminate the glue and the water, the hot water, at the same time. We then take it to a special diatonation sort of filter, and at that point, we dry, uh, we clean the water back down to one micron, so we can reuse that water again and again. And again. Let's see if it works. No. Okay. So again, nice video. <laughs> and uh, uh, the main point here is that the friction washer. Move it back for a second. The friction washer again. The material comes in at one end and extract it at the other end. The water showering down, we eliminate, we give it a good clean, good cleaning, eliminate all the uh, non-PET particles, especially the glue. And uh, our diatonation sort of filter, where we remove down to one to two microns any non-liquid uh, fluids that can be removed. We maintain the chemicals and the heat, just want to get rid of the glue. In the fourth, we have four final stages of rinsing as well, and this is uh, critical in cleaning the, uh, the caustic soda at this point. So we start at this point, and then we work it all the way through to the final uh, centrifuge. So here's where the fresh water comes in at the centrifuge, where we use approximately one pint of water to clean one pound of PET, and at that point, the water starts in, and moves forward through the system. 
mechanical drying, as well as hot air drying, serpentine belt uh, system inside, approximately 100 feet long, dries it down to 0.0% humidity. Then sizing, what we do here is we resize it to the operation that is going to be done. So for example, at uh, Ice River Springs, they want it at 10 millimeters. At uh, Marlin, they want it at 3.8. Mohawk wants it a little bit finer. Everybody has their step in the process that they want to final size the material for before they go into production through the extrusion process. So a final grinder sizes it right to their size. Then after the mixing, we do the de-dusting, and we then go into optical sorting. So that, what we have is a clean flake, but just in case anything is missing, we then go down to uh, 3 eighths, quarter of inch, two millimeters, and we then check to see if there's any non-PET or other colors in the uh, in the, the batch of material that's just been washed to eliminate that. So it gives us a very high quality of clean flake at the end. And then again, metal flake. If there's a metal flake uh, in it, we then remove that as well to our metal detectors as well. The chemicals, we, have, we want to understand our clients allow us to view their machinery anywhere in the world that's operating. We can check exactly how much chemical they're consuming, how much energy they're consuming at any one moment in time. We, I was at Wellman just uh, a few days ago, and Wellman down in South Carolina, and the vice president was showing me that he had it on his uh, on his iPhone. He could actually adjust the whole operation, and they do a quarter of a billion pounds a year. And this guy has the ability to adjust the whole flow process on a plant like that. So again, on our process, we're looking at conserving energy, water. We know exactly what's going on in every step of the way, in every process. We can see, again, ourselves or our clients can see exactly what's going on through each step, the whole bottle wash, all the motors, how many amps they're using, you know, is it right, is it running too hot, why is it running too hot, what needs to be maintained, what, what's the flow of water, is there a backup here or there. Again, this is all on their screen, up at Ice River, they can see, Justin can see at any one time exactly what's going on and decide is this right or is this wrong, and make a change if needed, or if the parameters are being met. So everything is set on the parameters, what needs to be done, the temperature of the water, 85 degrees C, in the friction washer, for example. Everything is analyzed to a point to make sure that this is not just a, an art, but it's a science. That we look at each element to make certain that we have it under control, the client is optimizing the production and making money. Maintenance schedule, it's all programmed in there. What happens at 5,000 hours, this part here needs to be replaced. At uh, 120 hours, this part needs to be greased, et cetera, et cetera. We can see the weekly production, they have it. Everything is retained for them. So if somebody says, hey, this wasn't done right, they can come back and say, wait a second, the water temperature was at this level at that time, and uh, the production rate was right on, the temperature's rate, that's why we have clean flakes. So when you have a high quality clean flake, it's not brown, it's not gray, it's not blue, it's nice and clear. You can see if there's any uh, PVC in it, any other polymers in it, if there's any glue in it, and things like that. So then, how do you know it's really clean? Well, we do our testing. We test also for bacteria, enterobacteria, fungi as well. So we're checking to see you know, what the material is on the start, and then what the material is like when it goes to plant. So we understand that even after 72 hours of testing and verification, the process, that it is clean material. It can be used back into a food grade application. We don't have to worry about this, any contamination moving forward in the process. How much money does it cost? That's a big question. In your case, you don't have to worry. Ice River is doing it for us already. But this is what we want to get down to, a delta, less than delta two on the change in colors. Uh, we want to have basically no parts per million of any foreign material in there. Uh, 
no blue, no pH rise, so it can't affect anything on the processes further downstream to make new containers, fibers, or whatever application. And then what the, the main consumption items are, your wastewater, your water coming in, your wastewater going out to the water treatment, your CODs and BODs. So we analyze this and we've taken it to the nth degree to make sure that our clients understand that the process works. And that's why the Italian technology has been so successful in this market. What your consumption is looking at, very minor amount of energy used, water, filtering materials, steam, etc. We've got it all under control, we know exactly what's right. So, as I was saying, now we're doing, in those, just in those eight years since the first plants have gone in, over one billion pounds with a whip, Italian technology. And it's to see the rise that's happened over the years is just phenomenal, and seeing that. Now we're supposed to have one more slide, one more video of Ice River. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll see. And then, uh, you know, my main thing is please recycle for many happy regions. No, we're not going to get that. Anyhow, it was the Ice River story, and I'm sorry about that. It's their own video. Uh, maybe next time. I will say in closing, uh, this presentation was on the last, uh, the last technology swing as we've heard before we had to see this coming we started in this back in the 90s we knew this was going to be coming on stream at a moment now what we're seeing is the, the the huge cry from municipalities on what we're going to be doing with waste there is no trash there is no such thing as trash and i only see it as a commodity that has to be sorted properly and taken to the next level and so the next thing that we're bringing into the market, the, the next plan is going to be down in Charlotte, is waste to energy. So we're going to be taking the organic stream of the municipal waste materials to produce energy, bio, or biogas, so that you can run the cars and, uh, and trucks for the municipalities, or to create energy and steam and heat, uh, or cool uh, operations, homes, and things, things like that. So this is where the technology is coming from in Italy. It's already out there, it's working. Uh, we've got numerous plants like that also operating for waste to energy now in Europe, and we're seeing the shift coming to North America as well. So I want to thank you very much. I want to thank very much the Machines Italia and the University of Hamilton for the opportunity to discuss this, uh, these points today. Thank you.